okay we just talked about the multiplicity of a function and I don't want us to get the wrong idea um, looking at these zeros and even and odd and all that business so what I want to do is I want to go back and look at our zeros again keeping in mind if we're talking about even multiplicity the graph touches odd multiplicity it crosses okay back up here we had x-intercepts at negative 2, so our 0 would be negative 2. The multiplicity, now that's not the 0 itself, but how many times the 0 happens? It happened 2 times. So that is an even number which tells us that the graph will touch the x-axis at that point back on the first one that we did here we had zeros we had two of them we had a zero at one and we had a zero at negative five now the multiplicity multiplicity this zero happened one time this zero happened one time those are both odd oops odd numbers which tells us at this zero then the graph will cross the x-axis multiplicity is how many times it happens the zero is the actual x-intercept itself so we don't want to confuse those two all right so now, once we understand about multiplicities, um, we can also talk about turning points also. Uh, we have a theorem that says if we've got a polynomial function of some degree, n, then the function will turn at at most n minus 1 turning points. If you think about the two functions that we've looked at so far, these were both quadratic. They both were a degree 2 polynomial. And if you'll notice, they only had one turning point. That's because if you think about how many answers you can get in a solution here, um, a quadratic only has at most two solutions. Well, if it has t two solutions, let me go back to this picture then that means it can only cross the x-axis in at most two places which means it can only turn one time if this thing were to turn around here and come back down again then we would have to have another x-intercept and that is not possible out of a quadratic so um, whatever the degree is whatever it is. If it's a fourth degree polynomial, then we can only have 4 minus 1, which would be 3 turning points. If we had a 12th degree polynomial, then we could only have 12 minus 1, which would be 11 turning points. This will help you to be able to decide, um, you know, to, to be able to analyze your functions a little bit better.